to Now What with Britt and Sean. I'm Britt. I'm Britt. <clears throat> Bless you. And he's Sean. On our channel for grades K to 8, we learn new things and have some fun. Woo! Hey, Sean, what are you doing? Oh, I'm so sorry. I was just reading a book about space. Oh, well, what kinds of things have you learned? So much. Space is awesome. Did you know that if a human ever gets sucked into a black hole, they will become a string of atoms, just like spaghetti? It's called the noodle effect. Wow, I didn't know that. And did you know that it's impossible to reach the edge of the universe because it's constantly growing every second? Oh, that kind of blows my mind. Right? And did you know that if two pieces of the same metal touch in space, they become permanently stuck together? It's called cold welding. Wow, that's so interesting. Have you learned anything about the Milky Way? The Milky Way? What's that? The Milky Way is what we call our galaxy. Astronomers have found more than 500 solar systems in our galaxy, but scientists estimate that there could be as many as 100 billion. Our solar system consists of the Sun, eight planets, dwarf planets, and dozens of moons, as well as millions of asteroids, comets, and meteoroids. Wow, that's a lot of stuff floating around up there. I wish we could see our solar system from space. Wait a second, we can. You can do your snappy thing. That's a great idea. Ready, Sean? Not yet. We need one more thing. Now we're ready. Commence countdown. Five seconds to lift off. Five, four, three, two, one. Here's our first stop, Neptune. Neptune is the farthest planet from the sun. It's dark and cold here and has the strongest winds of any planet. Ah, who's that little guy? That's Pluto. Pluto used to be considered a planet until scientists realized that it didn't fit all the criteria. Now it's considered a dwarf planet. It's so cute. Can we take it home? Mm, still about the same size as Russia. Oh. Unlike any other planet, Uranus rotates on its side like a barrel. It also hits the coldest temperatures of any planet, with a minimum atmospheric temperature of negative 224 degrees Celsius or 371 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, methane gas makes Uranus blue. Saturn is made mostly of gas. Although other planets have rings, none are as spectacular as Saturn's, which are made up mostly of chunks of ice and rock. It also has a total of 82 moons, more than any other planet in our solar system. Hey, Saturn's rings look like a giant record. <laughs> Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system. In fact, it's more than twice as massive as all the other planets combined. It also has the shortest days of any other planet, lasting nine hours and 55 minutes. That means if I lived on Jupiter, I would literally sleep all day. Mars is a cold, dusty desert with a very thin atmosphere. Some scientists believe there was once life on Mars. They continue to explore the planet to see if it could sustain life again in the future. Also, the surface gravity on Mars is only 37% of the Earth's, which means you could jump nearly three times higher on Mars. That's how I plan on jump-starting my basketball career. This one looks familiar because it's Earth. Earth is our home planet. It's the only planet we know for sure is inhabited by living things. It's also the only planet with liquid water on its surface. 70% of the Earth's surface is covered in water. Hi fellow Earthlings. Venus is about the same size as Earth. Because of the planet's thick atmosphere, Venus is the hottest planet, even though it's not the closest to the Sun. Venus spins slowly in the opposite direction of most planets. Because of how slowly it spins, a day on Venus lasts longer than a year on Venus. So that means if I lived on Venus, I would be both 66 days old and 72 years old at the same time? That's right. Mercury is the smallest planet, only a bit larger than Earth's moon. It's also the fastest planet. It moves around the sun every 88 days. 
Speaking of which, hello, Mr. Sun. You got it. But did you know that the sun is a star? Also, 99% of our solar system's mass is the sun. The sun is 300,000 times larger than Earth. It's getting a little bit too hot here. Let's go back. Good idea. That was amazing. Hey, I have an idea. Why don't we make our own solar systems? But Sean, plants can take millions of years to form. Don't worry, I think I know a way to make them form much faster. For this activity, you're going to need some crayons or oil pastels, some tempera paint, make sure it's tempera and it's not acrylic, some dish soap, toothpicks, a paint container, a paintbrush, and a piece of poster board. If you use regular paper, it won't work. So make sure that you get some poster board and you can cut to a certain size. We have cut it to eight by 10. So the first step in this activity is you're going to take your poster board and you're going to color it completely. Now the whole idea with this is when you're coloring this, you're gonna be using crayons and oil pastel. Make sure that you press really, really hard. You might actually break a crayon, but that's okay. But you wanna make sure that you have a nice waxy surface so when we paint this later, it'll actually not stick to the crayon and you'll be able to make your scratch art. Also too, when you are coloring this, you wanna make sure that you are coloring it multiple different colors so that way when you expose the actual crayon underneath the paint, you're going to see all these wonderful designs. And if you are going to use white, I know this is already white itself, you have to make sure that you use a white crayon because you need it to be waxy. So if you wanna leave white on your piece of paper, that is okay, but you have to use a white crayon. Now that I've colored this all, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a shake and make sure that there's no excess crayon on it. And if you notice, I've pressed really, really hard and I actually broke a couple of crayons when I was doing that, but that's okay. You just wanna make sure that you have enough wax on the paper so that way uh, when you paint over it, the paint won't stick to the actual crayon when we're trying to scratch it off afterwards. And if you notice too, I didn't leave any white marks and the part where I did want to leave white, I did color with crayon. You want colors everywhere. You want lines, swirls, whatever you want. You just want to make sure that you color with a bunch of different colors and that it's covering the entire paper. The next step in this activity is you're going to take your paint container, some tempera paint, and some dish soap. And we're going to mix a little bit together. So we're going to take the paint first. And like I said, remember, make sure it's not acrylic. You want tempera paint. We're gonna put a little bit in here, and then we're just gonna add a little bit of dish soap. And the reason why we're putting a little bit of dish soap is we wanna make sure that it does stick a little bit to the crayon, okay? Otherwise, the paint might just slip completely off because of all the wax. We don't want it to stick completely, that's why we don't use acrylic, but we need to put a little bit of dish soap in so that way it sticks a little bit. And so we mix that up, and now we're going to cover our crayon. You wanna try and do it in one, one direction as best, best as possible because you wanna make sure that you're not going back over and taking the paint off with your paintbrush. If you look out in space, it is completely dark except for you know some, some stars and some planets which we are going to create afterwards. But the background of space is completely dark and that's why we're using some black paint to cover up all of our funky colors that we used. And there we go. Now that we've painted this, you're gonna actually have to let it sit and dry. You could uh, come back to this activity tomorrow and finish it off, um, but you definitely need it to dry. You should not be trying to scratch into wet paint because it will not work properly. Okay, for our last step, we are going to now scratch into our surface. So we let the paint dry for a couple hours. It's nice and dry. Um, and underneath, if you remember, we have crayons. So the idea is that we're going to scratch off the black paint and we're gonna expose some of the crayon. And we are using a toothpick to do that. So you just need something with a little bit of a pointy edge. A uh, toothpick we can work, a thumbtack could work, also even a paper clip if you open it up. So we're gonna draw our solar system. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw my sun. And you see as I, as I start scratching off the paint, I'm exposing the crayon that's underneath. 
And the cool thing is, because we used a bunch of different colors all over the place, our planets and our suns, and all our images that we're scratching out are all gonna look really, really, really cool. Very, very colorful. And this is our sun, and our sun is a, an unusual color. It's not uh, the common, common bright orange or bright red sun that we're used to seeing. But that's okay. We're making our own solar system. And we can be very creative. So our, our sun is, is a bright orange, a bright yellow, and then it has a couple of cold spots, which is kind of weird for a sun. It's got a purple spot and it also has a blue spot. But overall, it's still really, really, really hot and shiny. And so it can still heat up our planets and make sure that life is sustainable in our solar system. Okay, so there's, there's my sun. If you want, you can take the time to scratch out all the little pieces of black, but I kind of like the texture, so I'm gonna leave it. So I got my sun, now I'm gonna draw my first planet. And maybe this will be, this will be the planet that I decide to live on. And I'm not sure what I would call it. I kinda like the name of our planet, Earth. Maybe I'll give it a scientific name, like Planet 634. And my planet has a little bit of blue in it, a little bit of yellow looks like, and a little bit of red. And if you notice, my planet isn't perfectly, perfectly circular, but that's okay. Actually, planets aren't a perfect circle anyways, or a perfect sphere. They have lumps and misshapen edges and areas. So there's my planet, 642. And then I'm gonna draw some moons. I think my planet's gonna have a few moons, not just one like we have in Earth. We're gonna have one here. I've got a yellow moon over here second yellow moon. It's kind of fun when you scratch it off because you don't remember the color sometimes. It's almost like a surprise. It's like opening up a gift. Oh, there's a red moon and another red moon. So my planet has four different moons. I wonder how that would affect our tides. Okay, I'm going to draw another planet over here. This one looks like a planet that's full of water. So the the planet that I, I had drawn for myself has red, which maybe is some kind of desert, and it has blue, so I can assume that that's water over there, but this one is completely blue. And that could be because it's all water, or it could also be a mixture of gases like methane and other gases that create a blue hue. There's my other plants, a little bit smaller than my, my big planet, and I'm gonna draw another planet over here. I feel like my solar system isn't going to have a lot of planets. I kind of want to draw a couple other things in my solar system to make it a little bit more interesting. But I have three planets. And you can draw as many as you want. If you can fit 20 planets on your page, go for it. And this one's cool too. I like this one. This one's half and half. This one is half orange and half blue. So I'm going to assume that at least half the planet is full of water. So maybe there's some fish creatures on one side, and on the other side there's just land creatures, but they, they're just kind of like separated right in the middle. It's kind of weird. Okay, and now I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw a comet. So I'm gonna make my comet up here, and it's really small. And comets kind of have, kind of have like a tail behind them. So this, this comet's gonna have a tail, and it looks like it's a blue tail. And it's, and it's shooting towards our sun. And it's got some yellow, which is kind of cool because I'm imagining it's, it's heating up as it travels through the universe, right on the front. And the tail is nice and blue. There we go, so there's my comet over there. And then I'm gonna draw maybe another comet over here. I have a really active solar system. A lot of objects flying around. And this comet is a little bit different. This comet is red and orange. And the tail's a little bit blue. So like I said, when you, when you start scratching off this paint, it's definitely a surprise. And I like that, that looks really, really cool. Okay, and one thing I wanna add, which I'm excited about, I'm gonna add a rocket ship. Now, my rocket ship is gonna look kinda of big in comparison to my planets, but that's okay, because that could just be because of depth. So it just could be that my rocket ship is closer to the view 
that I am viewing right now. It's closer to me, so that's why it looks bigger, where my planets and my sun are off in a distance. So there's my rocket. And my rocket's gonna have to have some kind of fuel shooting out the back. Usually it's red, but I guess I found some alternative energy. And it's shooting out blue. So there's my rocket. And there is the fuel of the propulsion coming out of the bottom. And I'm gonna make my wing a little bit better, a little bit bigger. And the cool thing is you can always fix it. So if you want your lines to be thicker, you make a little bit of mistake, you can just thicken it up and you can hide your mistakes really, really easily. So yeah, I'm just gonna make it thicker so it's just gonna look, actually looks much better that way too. All right, there's my rocket ship. And then I think just in the end here, I'm going to add some stars. And remember, we learned today that the sun is a star. So that means these stars that are way in the background are actually suns for maybe other planets or other solar systems. But they're so far away that they don't look that big. And once again, that's why our, our rocket ship looks really, really big, because it's closer to us. But our stars are all all over the galaxy and they're very, very far away from our solar system. We only have one in our solar system. And that is my solar system. That was so much fun, Sean. Yeah, I enjoyed that too. Can I see your solar system? Sure. Here it is. There's my sun. And then I have lots of planets here. These are triplet planets. This planet has rings just like Saturn. And this one's really bright. I have comets meteors and asteroids, and I even included a little astronaut. That's amazing. Thanks. Now, now what? what? You can make scratch art of lots of different things in space. For example, you can make your own meteor shower, design your own planet, or even recreate our solar system. We would love to see your scratch art. If you want, you can take a picture and send it to us. You can find out how in the description below. If you enjoyed your time with us today, make sure that you like the video and subscribe to our channel so that way we can have more fun together. See you next time.